Hey all this is Chris Charles, Everyday VBA. This video we're going to be doing a uh, conference call bingo Excel spreadsheet. I know you guys are all excited. Uh, this is completely random and really has less to do with code and more to do with fun. Um, and maybe just getting this to your coworkers so that you can play a game. This came from conference call bingo.net, which is a blog. Super funny. Um, if you're <laughs> if you've ever been on a conference call. Anyway, so what I've done is I've taken these uh, straight from here and I've put him in here in a spreadsheet. So how would we make a bingo sheet uh, using Excel and doing some code? Uh, so we're just going to dig in and get her done. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a random number. We're going to put a random number on all of these. It's going to give me a random number from 0 to 1. And now all we need to do is do a rank. Um, hopefully this will make sense. Maybe it won't, but in any case, well, we're going to rank that number, comma, among these ones. And essentially what that's going to do, this is going to be dynamic, which essentially is why you have to um, do this in code, is because this would dynamically change. Um, it would get kind of difficult. And essentially you can hide these things, and um, the way that we're going to code it is you could add whatever you wanted. Um, you could even call it your coworkers for bringing up their keyword or whatever. So essentially now that we've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bingo sheet over here. It's going to be our bingo sheet. And I'm doing this pretty raw, so um, this may be completely entertaining or it can make it go completely off the rails. We don't know at this point, but we will soon find out. So we're going to insert a module. We're going to call this sub bingo. Um, and I know this may not actually make sense why we're doing this, but essentially we've got those five different squares and we've got to fill them in. And what we're going to do, um, essentially I'm going to put them in really quick um, and then I'm going to format it so that it looks pretty. Um, we're going to start on column three. And we are going to simply do a, uh, do a range uh, we're going to select our range. All right. Well, first let's declare it dim RNG as range. Set RNG equal to range. I uh, better put the code name in there. Sheets two dot range. Um, and again, I'm I use I use these code words all the time. Or the code name of the sheet instead of bingo. That way, if someone changes the sheet name, you're not in trouble. Uh, it can be a pain if that happens. Oh my gosh. Okay, range, we're gonna go from A3, and now we need to go one, two, three, four, five. Um, and you'll notice I've got a counter up there right above my mouse, one, two, three, four. That should be five, it's a five by five, five rows, five squares, so we're gonna go to E7. So E7, everybody's happy. And now what we're going to do down here is I'm just going to check this to make sure that um, that actually is going to select what I'm looking for. Uh, dot select. There it is. That's perfect. So that's exactly what I need. Um, and this is where it actually gets fairly stinking simple. First thing we're going to do is we are going to grab the current region here. So my current region is essentially like control A. Um, I use, I typically throw those in an array called O array. Not exactly sure why I call those O array, but that's what I've done for a long time. So it's probably not gonna change. Sheet one dot uh, cells, I'm gonna go cells one one dot current region. And what I'm going to now have is now I have a range that I'm going to roll through. And I have all of those variables in an array. So now, simply simply put, I have to just put those in there. Uh, it shouldn't actually take that long. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go for each uh, CL in RNG. Um, so a range is made up of cells. Um, I've given that, so for every cell, which I've given the variable CL, um, I'm going to do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a counter, C and T, 
is equal to C and T plus one, C and T equals zero. Okay, so now, essentially what we've done now, let me show you actually what we've done. So we're gonna go cl.select. Um, I'm gonna run through this. I'm gonna hit F8. I've got an issue here because I did not end my if statement. Should I, or my, not my if statement. It's for next, not for end. Okay, so we're rolling through this. It's gonna give me that information. It doesn't like how I spelled something, probably because I missed an R. Funny how code will do that. So essentially I've got a counter here and it's going to go from one to two to three and it's gonna go through each one of these. And the way that the, the for loop will go through there is it just goes through every single one and then essentially you're done. So now hopefully it's making more sense why I'm coming over here and I pulled that array. So now all we need to do is I need a for um, rw equals one to u bound o array next. Okay, so what this will do is essentially I've got my, o, my array, it's in my locals window over here. It's gonna go through each one and when it finds the one, um, I'm gonna tell it what to do. Now I haven't told it to do that yet, so just be patient. Okay, so we're gonna go if um, o array rw, which is would be the row, so essentially whatever's in here, whatever row I'm on, I'm gonna start on one. Um, I really should start on two actually. Um, and I'm gonna be, I want the third column, so it's gonna be three, is equal to C and T or my count then I want to do something. Then I'm going to go cl dot value is equal to o array rw comma one. And let's actually see if that worked. So I don't know what I'm on here. So let's drag this back up. O array, it doesn't like it when you misspell stuff. Funny how that works. Oh. It also doesn't like it if you don't end your thing. And if we're gonna exit sub, exit four here, um, and essentially this allows the code to be a little bit faster. Uh, if it's found, um, it's gonna exit. It's not gonna go through all 20 every time. Not gonna be that big of a deal, but if you do have a bunch of stuff, could be an issue. Okay, we're way down there, we don't want that. So we're gonna start over. So we've got count of one going to select it. I'll probably, I'm actually going to code that, take that out because I don't need that anymore. Um, and essentially that's equal to seven, that's equal to one. And we are going to, I'm actually going to put a break here, hit F5, see if it stops. And you will notice that it populated perfectly. So now what we've got is we're going to come in here and run the whole thing. That is a beautiful thing. One, two, Okay, so we have the code that actually creates our bingo now. Um, the only one thing I want to do is I want to change this to E4 and E9. Now let's run this again. Um, first thing we want to do, uh, now, now, so essentially now that we've got our code working, we do have to kind of clean it up. Um, so we're going to go RNG dot clear contents. We're not going to do clear because we don't want to clear out all the all of the formatting that we're going to do. But I'm going to run that. You'll notice it populates everything in there perfectly. We've got to do a couple things to make this look pretty. First thing we're going to do is we are going to wrap these. We're going to extend them. So it looks like a bingo sheet. We're gonna make them a little bigger as far as text go. We're going to put them in the center center, make them a little bigger. Um, and at this point, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, uh, the next piece that we want to do 
is we want to for this middle cell. So we're going to go range uh, sheet two dot range C six C six is equal to um, free. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run this. Right, you'll notice it changed. Hi, you just joined. Freeze in the middle. That's perfect. You notice that every time we do that, because those randoms change, um, that it changes the entire thing. So we're not done yet. Uh, we need to add a button, and then we need to add a couple other things. Um, sometimes I break this down so that it's uh, better on my on my videos, but sometimes it just makes it look worse. Okay, so we want, let's do let's do that guy. Essentially, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, we've got a couple pieces that we need to do. So we need to be able to blank these out. Um, again, this video is taking a little longer than I probably would want. Uh, we're gonna, going to assign bingo to this, and now we click bingo. Um, we are going to, before we do anything, we're going to do a if um, we're going to go um, reset bingo. We're going to do v b yes no equals v b yes. Then, no. Uh, we're going to keep this all in one line. So we're going to go if it's equal to VB, no. Then all we're going to do is we're going to exit sub. Now you'll notice I don't have a I don't have an enter. Um, so if it's if you just run a single line, you don't have to do two things, which is kind of nice. Um, so now if I run this, click the button, reset bingo, no, and it's not reset. So the one thing that we do have to do is we need to rng dot dot interior dot color is equal to um, essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here where I go to question mark because I'm in my immediate window and I don't want to do thing. I just want a response. So I'm going to go active cell, interior dot color. It's going to give me an error. Oh, it didn't. I expected it to give me an error because I have an error up there in my code. That is a first. OK, so now what we've got to do is we have, uh, we need to be able to blank these out. So we are going to click on here. We're going to go view code. Now, essentially, this is going to go to my selected code um, and so what we're going to do here is um, this is for the sheet this is actual code on the worksheet so if I click worksheet it's going to say selection change and that is actually what I want to use so that's nice so we're going to go if uh, essentially we're not even going to do that we're just going to turn it the the text to white and the uh, code to some sort of blue or something so let's figure out which color we want to change it to maybe we could just go here we'll just do that so again active cell interior color i've got this down here that's my new color and so we're going to go target dot Interior dot color is equal to this guy right here. Everybody's happy. And there we go. So as you can tell, we have built ourselves. Now what's interesting is I just basically, since I use that select, uh, we're going to have to clean this up. 
Um, so what I did is I essentially made this whole thing blue because um, I didn't. That, that was not smart. So we're gonna go back to the module. Let's clean that up. Um, it's a little silly at this point. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna come down here. We're going to go to sheet two dot cells dot interior color. Bam, everything's back to normal. Let's put some columns around this. Um, so it's gonna turn it purple, which is not what we want. Um, so we're going to have to go back into that sheet code and essentially we are going to have to put in an if statement where it says if target dot rows is greater than one or target dot columns. Uh, I think it's going to be count actually. I got to put that in is greater than one then exit sub. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm doing some uh, kind of some some air handling. Okay. So now we also need to say it also needs to fall within those ranges. So the uh, so essentially we need to come in here. We're gonna go. Uh, this needs to need to add to this. Or target dot row. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna simplify this. So essentially, if it's greater than that. Um, then then it's going to put something and it's going to exit it's going to exit the sub then we are also going to basically swap it back so we're going to say if else if target interior color equals that I got to put in two four then that needs to be a single thing. We're essentially going to put the target color back to white, which is this first guy right here. All right, so what we have now is if we click on this, that's interesting, it changes the selection. Okay, so essentially what I did here, um, I've got to add this. I've been coloring it one color and then coloring it the other, which is exciting, which is why it has not uncolored, which is nice. All righty. So we need to do one other thing to make this kind of, kind of have this all set out. First thing we're going to do is go back here to our module. And we're going to put this guy right here. Perfect. I think we are very good to go. So uh, again, this has really a whole, not a lot to do with coding, but it's actually kind of a fun little project. And you can actually rechange everything. It sets everything to free. Um, and <laughs> there you've got your bingo. Your bingo conference call bingo deal. So hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a little code and uh, make sure that you're subscribing to the Everyday VBA channel.